Hey, this is Steven from RC Engineering, and we're here at my local park to review the Tech Boy, the Tech Boy Mini Bull, uh, the 32052, but uh, mainly known as the Tech Boy Mini Bull. And uh, here is the uh, plane here, and I'm gonna explain what I'm doing here. I need a little bit of nose weight. So here's the uh, the Tech Boy Mini Bull, um, as you see, named after the two bulls here. It is a EPP miniature uh, kind of toy plane, I guess you could say. Um, it flies on a geared brushed motor there. I think it's got a two inch, it's about a two inch prop on it. It's made out of EPP again. And the cool thing about this one, which I've always wanted a plane that does this, it runs on a linear a magnetic actuators. So you see there are some really cool magnetic actuators you go back and forth there. And so it's actually just two channel. This guy is controlled differently, and I'll explain how these guys are controlled, the ailerons, separately. But it's mainly just throttle and rudder. And you see also rudder here is also a magnetic actuator. So here's the controller here. Oops, that's my phone. Here's the controller here. And so this guy just runs on a slider and a left and right and as you see with the linear actuator uh, linear actuators you're gonna lose some of the precision that you did have with servos and you're only gonna get a non, -pro non proportionality on this controller where the rudder will either go full left or full right and then the ailerons are controlled differently when you take your controller and you rotate it your pl one one will go down and the other one will go up to cause for uh, cause rotation. So you'll see that this model is kind of beat up. So I wanted to explain why that is. When this model came to me, it actually had a dead battery on it. It would not hold the charge to even turn the prop on. So what I had to do was I had to cut down uh, into the model to uh, change the battery in it. And when I opened up the model to look at the battery I found that it was only about 0.7 volts on the battery internally so obviously it's dead any battery of 0.7 volts is dead so I went to a local um, my local hobby shop uh, Aero Micro in San Jose and I picked up a 150 milliamp hour I cut this guy open and I put in the 150 milliamp hour in there so now it holds a charge and it flies great I think stock, it comes with a 140, I think. But now it's got a 150, because we didn't, I didn't have any 140s. And it gets about eight minute uh, flight time. But because of that, I might have uh, moved something around where the CG is a little messed up now. So I put these pennies to get a good CG, because I actually recorded this video uh, yesterday, and um, it was flying a lot tail heavy. And today is a way better day to fly, so that's what we're going to do. So now it should fly nice and flat. Uh, the CG now is right over these wires. The CG before was over these finger holes. And I think it was a little too far back. So perfect day, 2 mile an hour winds, 60 degrees. Just took my jacket off. And so we're going to go out here for a flight. And also, these are my new glasses, the Pivot Heads. This is the very first review that I'm going to do with these guys. Uh, I think the quality is quite a bit better on these, and these are the glasses that I'm going to be using for this year to increase the quality until I find something different or until I don't. So uh, my quality is good, and the picture is even better. And as you see, we have a beautiful day out today, perfect day to go flying. I might even charge this guy up and go flying again later. Okay, so first thing you do... Press that button there to power on. Light on the bottom comes on. Turn the controller with the switch on the back. Go throttle up and throttle down. You see it flash. Now you're ready to launch. And again, these are two dimes in the front, about two, three grams for a counterweight. And for this guy at rudder, I'm going to talk a little bit how you fly this appropriately, but let's go half throttle. Not a good first one. Yesterday was way better, but yesterday we had a lot of fog, so air was a lot more dense. It's way easier to have more lift. And then every single time you crash, you have to rebind. So let's make sure the tail's working. Tail's working. Okay.
Might be too much weight. Pennies might be too much weight. I have to dump the pennies. I don't know where the other one went. I don't really care. Okay, let's bind it up again. There it goes. Okay, when you porpoise like that, you gotta be very careful. So, this guy, one of the things I want to talk about is how to fly a uh, rudder-only control system. A rudder control-only system, you have to be very careful on your throttle because you have problems with doing stuff like that, which is porpoising. So I'll show you guys that in a second. Once I get it to take off. So I'm gonna go about half throttle, a little bit over half throttle. There we go. There we go. And you see it, it flies really tail heavy, but I just did not have enough throttle, I just did not have enough uh, weight. So I might have to go with a bigger battery or something. But yeah, before, before I glued it back together, it did not have these problems of flying tail heavy. So I don't know what's going on there. Another thing with this model, make sure to keep it close to you. The distance is not very good. So make sure to keep it close. Make sure to keep it very, very close to you uh, so that um, you uh, don't run out of range because the range on this guy, it's, not, it's no sort of a protocol. It's just a regular 2.5 uh, gigahertz controller. So definitely don't want to get that far. Because you'll actually start to notice it start to cut out kind of like that. And then also you do not want to go too low on the throttle. And as you hear, one of the ways to kind of fly it, there was a little bit of a breeze there. One of the ways to fly it is to um, just do just do general clicks on the controller in which direction you want to go, left or right. And so let's get it back down here because it's harder for me to get it it's centered in the centered in the glasses. So I'm going to drop the throttle because the wind is actually starting to barely on the throttle at all. So let's drop altitude. Okay, that's better. Okay, now we're in the center of focus again. All right, so I'm gonna increase the throttle just slightly. Okay, let's do let's do a roll. I'm gonna rotate the once I get straight towards me. I'm gonna increase the throttle a little bit. I'm gonna roll, turn the controller, and there's a roll. Let's get it out in front of me so I can get it back in get it back in frame further in front of me. I'm gonna step back further in this field here. I'm porpoising. So when you porpoise like that, a point is do not, you're going to want to, but do not increase throttle. You wanna keep, you wanna either lower the throttle or keep the throttle the same, because that will cause you to crash if you increase the throttle when you porpoise like that. Now porpoise is when the plane goes up and then stalls and falls downwards. Because if you if you increase throttle, it will it will stall harder. It will it will basically increase altitude harder. And and when it stalls, when it reaches the top point, and it runs out of thrust, it's going to stall even harder than normal. So net rot net a roll. There's a roll. So let's get it back over here. There we go. Get it away from the sun. So again, it gets about eight, nine minutes of flight time. Let's do another roll. And for some reason, uh, just a note, the controller likes to be rolled more to the right than it does to the left. It doesn't seem to respond when you roll it to the right. I mean, roll it to the left. Up too far. So when you roll it, make sure that you roll it to the right and not the left. At least on mine, that's where it likes to be. There it goes. Increase the throttle slightly. See, I'm starting to porpoise. So every time you increase the throttle, it's going to basically try to porpoise like that. So be very gentle with your increases in throttle. 
So when when you get into a porpoise situation like you saw, do not do not um, freak out and give it more throttle. That's probably the worst thing that you could do. Keep the throttle the same, or if you porpoise too hard, if you're if it's like an extreme porpoise, let's do a roll here. If it's like an extreme porpoise, then uh, then pull back on the throttle. But the reason why mine is porpoising is because of that uh, that rear weight. I mean that uh, how it's tail heavy. It's really causing it to fly really weird. But it's not too tail heavy. It's just a little bit tail heavy. So I don't think that this model flight is really representative of what yours is going to be like. Mine is just that way because I had to open it up and swap the battery on it. Let's do another roll. Also, another thing about this guy, it's EPP, so it's very, very durable. Um, I'm not worried at it, about it at all at the field like this to really cause uh, damage to itself because it just doesn't really weigh a lot. I was going to guess, I was going to say 40, maybe 40 grams with 150 milliamp hour and be able to run for uh, 8 minutes or so on the 150 milliamp hour on a good battery. But obviously, I have to put a disclaimer on this guy. If you're going to get this guy, uh, I would probably be prepared to either have a soldering iron if that battery is dead. You have to do some work on it. You know, you might need a soldering iron to really do what you what you want on it. See, if it See it porpoised? I did not change the throttle there. I just let it get out of the porpoise. So your your mind's gonna be like oh I need to increase throttle pull out of it that's not the case and also another thing generally planes that porpoise hard like this are tail heavy when they have just rudder control also this plane does not have any dihedral on the main wing it does have some dihedral on the rear wing uh, on the horizontal stabilizer so that's helping out a little bit but that might also uh, affect the uh, the control as well so watch out for that. But also I believe because of the ability to roll, I think it does have, um, I think it does have internal gyros, which does make it a really nice model to, uh, to fly. And it's flying really erratically right now, porpoising a little bit and drop the throttle. Um, because it is kind of windy, more windy than the other day. But the other day it was uh, really, uh, really grim looking. There's a roll. It was a half roll. Yeah, really cool. I'm gonna say almost indestructible model that uh, really flies really nice and flat. There's another roll. But you see the rolls are just not that, not that great because of the uh, being tail heavy. But overall flies for a really long time. I don't know if that's because I swapped the battery out with a one four with a one fifty because it was originally a one forty or because you know the nice little breeze that I'm flying into or what the deal is. But it really does fly for a long time. So there I increase the throttle. It's causing it to porpoise every time it gets hit by the wind. So I'm making sure that I increase throttle gradually to climb in this kind of higher wind condition. So whether or not your model will act like this depends on if it's tail heavy like this. Or if you see it flying like this with its butt down, it's probably tail heavy. Let's do a roll. There it is. Another one. Also another thing, the rolls only go one way. So turning it a different direction will not change that. It will only roll one direction. So uh, that's a note. Um, so there, another thing also, um, another idea for the for the uh, rudder only flights of these guys, you do not want to go max throttle most of the time. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take off and then you're gonna find a throttle, a, a throttle value that does not cause it to porpoise so much. So generally on most models that are rudder controlled only, it's around, uh, it's around half throttle is the sweet spot to, uh, to fly. 
I'm getting really low. I think uh, I'm porpoising there a little bit. So I dropped the throttle. I think this guy's kind of had it on his battery. It's getting really weak. But uh, yeah, absolutely great model. You, you could look at when I started and when I ended for the exact flight time, but I'm thinking that it's somewhere around eight minutes. And this guy is great playing for, you know, if you're if you're tired uh, one week of, you know, flying your more expensive planes or you want to get something for your kids that won't, you know, destroy itself because for something like EPS, EPS foam will pretty much destroy itself, then uh, this might be one that you want to look at because it's pretty much indestructible as EPP. Um, and it's a little bit too light to hurt itself. Pretty easy to fly. Um, but then again, I've been flying for a while and I've flown a lot of these toys a lot. So, I mean, there is that porpoise drop throttle a little bit. There you go. Um, but yeah, using these techniques I talked about in this video, you should have no problems with this guy. I think it'll fly a lot better if it had more nose weight. You might have to pop in there and give it like a 180 milliamp hour or a two or a um, 200 milliamp hour uh, farther forward. Just give it more battery life, but yet not have any dead weight. Give it a little bit more power. Uh, maybe even a higher C battery. I can't remember what the C rating on this guy was, but as you see, I could pretty much fly forever. The other thing is that I don't know if this guy's got a low voltage cutoff or not. Uh, I think it just eventually run out of power and you just can't keep it up anymore. But really cool, you can see the rudder flapping there in the wind. It's an overall great model. So let's talk a little bit about how I acquired it. Um, I bought it on eBay for about $27 in the United States because I wanted to get it quickly for some reason. I forgot what that reason was. Um, probably wouldn't pay, pay that for this guy again. Um, what I would recommend is uh, buy it from, direct from China or Tom Top or whatever um, for maybe, I think it's maybe worth 15 bucks with controller and this guy charges off USB. Uh, you can either charge it from the controller using four triple A's I believe and it charges in a little bit or you could go with uh, charging it from your computer and then it'll fly for like you saw eight, nine minutes. And then you turn it off here at the bottom, pressing the button again. It turns it off, make sure your controller's off. Yeah, it's a great little flyer for a park like this. Very small places, you can fly pretty easily. But uh, um, also when I bought it, that, uh, that particular retailer, which I believe was Tech Boy Official, they gave me a partial refund to buy a new battery. I believe it was 10 bucks. And I spent, you know, five bucks or whatever on the battery I could have spent, you know, a few bucks from China to, uh, to buy a 150, but I chose to buy uh, one at Aero Micro. They had one on the shelf that's been sitting there for like a year or, or two. So I bought that guy and now that guy's in here. Great little um, peaceful flyer, not nerve wracking at all. I'm not worried about crashing it. As you saw, I crashed it a few times. No problems, a little bit of dirt on the prop, but it comes with an extra prop. So yeah, so uh, this has been Steven from RC Engineering, and uh, this is my review of the Tech Boy Mini Bull. Highly recommend it. Try to get it for a cheap price. The price I got it for, probably not worth it. But um, yeah, and hopefully you get one with a good battery in it and you don't have to replace it. So uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe for more videos like it. And uh, check in the description for, some, uh, for a link to my Patreon page if you want to support my videos. And uh, go ahead and check out the tiers on the Patreon page. All right, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next video. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Peace.